Hello and welcome to SMPD, the podcast where we look back at the shows that shaped our childhood. I am Chris Bolton. With me, as always, my partner in podcasting, Mr. Mark Williams. Hello. And this episode, as if you couldn't tell from that theme tune, we are looking at just one of the most important shows in the world to me, I think. Um, I don't know why we've waited till episode 99 to do this. (laughs) And even then, I threw it on the list a couple of weeks ago because um, we kind of fucked our schedule up. So <laughs> we needed yeah. an extra show at short notice. So I was like, why haven't we done Batman 66 yet? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think um, you, you're right. I mean, it's it's certainly one of the more important shows to me as well. And this is something that I take way back to when I was like four or five and like used to, yeah, we used to watch it. You know, like this was on a Saturday lunchtime. I used to sit down and watch it with my dad. Um, and this was you know, my entire introduction to all of superhero them. Pretty, um, I, yeah, I'm pretty much the same. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's... It, it's a strange one, but it's it's kind of appropriate as well because um, right back at the start, like our pilot was Inspector Gadget, and then the, our first proper episode was um, the animated series. Yes. So it's kind of timely that we, as I don't know as we sort of round out the, uh, the, the the century of episodes, that we are going right back to what is probably the you no know, one of the seminal shows of both our childhoods. Yeah, definitely, and it, and I think it's also Batman, both the animated series and and this, even though we haven't really talked about it the show that much before i feel like it's kind of almost integrated into the dna of this show like so much of what we talk about comes back to ah yeah but if you remember in batman the animated series or you know batman would do it like this or like that you know it's it's no secret that i'm a huge batman yeah i mean Um, i mean you go across the network as well i mean we did um back on who wins we did the batman and all the uh all the the, the batman uh uh, the batman yeah um and we've, we we ev- things come up all the time that we do you know that it does sneak into the into the lexicon of the show, and then you know, obviously we completely killed it with Bat Pussy over on Better Than Mario. So you know it's it's um yeah as you say it's it's part of the fabric of of the whole network really. I think so yeah. So it surprised me that that we hadn't done yeah. the show. Um, it's another one that fits the theme of our recent episodes as well. Yes. So. I guess we'll reveal that at the end of this episode. Hopefully you guys are all up to speed with what we've been doing by now. Yeah, um, and if you are, you can probably work out what we're doing anyway. It, yeah, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, it, it seemed like the perfect time to look at Batman 66. Um, but, you know, just yeah. to kick things off then straight off the bat, I think you you hit something right on the head there as well. Um, this is definitely one of the earliest TV shows that I can ever remember watching. Like it was, and, and it was always on. When we yeah. were kids, like you said, you watched it on a Saturday. I remember it being on during school holidays on Channel Four as well. Um, yeah. it, it was on there for a brief time. It was on Sky when we had our dodgy cable box. Like this thing was everywhere. It seemed to jump around all sorts of networks. Yeah. So, and it was definitely my first introduction to Batman. And in terms of yeah, superheroes, I think it probably was my first introduction to superheroes as well. I've mentioned on the network before, like my first superhero comic was a Superman comic that my nan bought me when I was ill. Um, But once I had read that, I distinctly remember putting two and two together in my head and going, right, hang on then, that's Superman who I've seen in cartoons and he's got a comic. So where's Batman? Because (laughs) I fucking loved this show and loved the character. So straight away, once I knew that this was a thing, like there was more ways you could access these cartoons and these these shows because they were written down or drawn out in comics, Hmm. I was like, right, well, yeah, Superman's great and all, and I really love that book, but where's Batman? Yes. Give me the Batman of it all. Uh, And then, of course, the Batman comics that I was reading back then in the mid-80s were nothing like this show. (laughs) (laughs) But that's kind of one of the joys of the character as well, you know, and that's a debate that's been had recently again now with the whole Battinson of it all. Um, yeah. Battinson, rather, not Battinson. Um, but there are so many different aspects to this character. Yeah. And it can be interpreted in so many different ways. And I think, obviously, you know, this show, uh, particularly uh, as in Batman 66, has had a bit of a bad rap. Uh, of late i think it's come full circle again now i think the yeah, appreciation right. for it is there again now but i think certainly late 90s early 2000s this was somewhat of a laughing stock oh it, it was cool to rag on it me. it was cool to rag on it because it was camp and it was so it was very cheesy and very kitsch and for all no for all the 
all the Tim Burtons we had and all you know, the, the Joe Schumacher movies, this was the one that stood, this is the thing that stood out as being ludicrous, if you like. And I think that was, a, it's such an unfair um, a label to, to throw at it because it's, if you know, if you look at the, the comic book movies we get now, obviously they're, they're all high on action, big drama, all the rest of it. They don't have that comic book feel to them. Mm. Whereas this is a comic book on fucking screen, even down to the zip, snack, kapow, all of it. Yeah. Gone, this is what it looks like on the page. This is what we want it to be on screen. And yes, okay, the cost, you know, the, the character designs and the costumes aren't quite right, um, but they're not a million miles off. Whereas, you know, you look at, no, you, you go now and then you've got, you know, I think the um, there was a competition at one point to see how, who, which, wh- whose Batman had the pointiest uh, ears. You know, because you, you had you had Batfleck and you had Bale, you had the um the uh all the the the, the ones from the nineties. And I said, like, oh fucking hell, right, okay. Now you go into um uh Pattinson and if it's just a fucking helmet with a couple of spikes on it. Yeah, I, I think it was probably Kilmer. I don't know. I didn't see it, but off the top I think of my it head, was Clooney actually. I think really? it was Clooney. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Certainly those late era Schumachers, like it got fucking ridiculous. He looked like yeah. a bull rather than a bat. Yeah. Um, well, that was that was it, and they put the kind of the the, the um the aerodynamic bits on the temples as well, didn't they? So they get the lines yeah. going across and uh, the nipples on the suit and it just got yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, that's right. But, no, but mean, nobody rags on those as much as they rag on their show for being camp and gay and all the rest of it. No, and I think, you know, to call this show camp and, you know, to, to level criticism at it like that, I think is to entirely miss the point of this mm. show. Yeah, uh, um, I, I think we have to remember as well that when this came out in the 60s, um, it was a, comics were an entirely different beast. It was yeah. a very different time, okay, and they were very heavily regulated. Um, certainly, Batman as a book got absolutely fucking ridiculous in the fifties and sixties, and and Batman was going into space and going into other dimensions and fighting fucking dinosaurs, and all of this was happening in Batman comic books at this time. So this was actually relatively faithful to be honest Mm. at the time (laughs) in terms of the tone this wasn't a million miles away and yes you're right Right. it does look like a comic book come to life or what we imagine a comic book to look like with the zap kapow and the you know you get the spinning logo coming up on the screen when you get transitions and stuff like that yeah i think even more the the narrator at the start as well it's it's like that's of that intro narration yeah yeah. you've got the action serial element of it you're right Mm. you know and, and you mentioned the costumes um, but actually, again, th- those costumes, if you think about it now, like take the Mark Hamill out of it, take the Ledger out of it, take every iteration of the Joker out of it that you like. Mm. You picture the Joker in your head and you're picturing the Joker from Batman 66. I guarantee you, yeah. I guarantee you, you're picturing Cesar Romero in the purple suit with the green hair and the white yeah. face. Now, yeah. you can put any one of those other faces on it, but yeah. you are picturing that costume, mm. right? My personal preference for Batman, like, don't get me wrong, this is just a leotard and stuff in this yeah. show, but one of the things that I get the most het up about with Batman and I get the most passionate about is the suit, right? And I fucking hate black on black. It really winds me up when mm. we just, especially like in the Nolanverse, where you just had this black on black fucking tech armor. Yeah. Right? Now, I don't mind gray on black, which is where we're kind of leaning with the more modern iterations again now, yeah. New 52 have gone sort of gray on black. And after that, then when we've had Rebirth, they've gone gray on black. And Patterson's kind of going towards that as well with the with the gun armor being yeah. like a gun metal on the black. But what I really fucking love is blue and gray. That, those are, that's Batman. That's like Batman's the, blue, colors. the yeah. blue and the gray, you know, or I'll accept black and yellow even if, if we have to push, you know, I'll, I'll accept the Burton black and yellow, but... Blue and grey, really. Like th- those are his colours, and always will be to me. And that's yeah. because of this, and it's also because of the way he was being drawn when I was reading books as a kid, and when I was reading some of the earlier books that I could get hold of that were from kind of the late seventies when I was reading yeah. in the mid eighties. That's what that's what he was in. You know, that it was he was in blue and grey, and yeah. so that's how the character looks to me. And I think again, I talk about it being a multifaceted character. And I'm I'm aware that now I'm talking more about Batman than I am specifically about Batman 66. So I will bring this back around, but it is all kind of tangentially related here. Yeah. Um, one of the things as well, I, I think to get the whole aspect of the character correct, like to get to the core of Batman, I think where so many people go wrong, where so many modern adaptations go wrong, 
is to lean into the darkness of it and to lean into mm. the fucking emo goth bullshit of it all. Yeah. And actually, that's not what's at the core of the character. And it's one of the things I really liked about the recent Matt Reeves film as well. And it's mm. one of the things that's actually drawn a lot of criticism from people is when it gets to the end and we kind of have that about face in the character. Yeah. And all of a sudden it becomes about hope and what you can do to help other people and move yourself yeah. forward. And like, actually, look, that is instrumental to who Batman is as a character. Yes, it's about grief and things like that as well. But the whole point yeah. of the character is that he exists so that what happened to him will never happen to anyone else. Yeah. Okay? And so it is about giving hope to other people. It's about accepting that you yourself are broken but making sure that other people don't have to feel as bad as you do. And yes, you need to terrify villains, but also you need to, you need to look heroic. There needs to be an element that inspires people. That's what a superhero is. That's what any superhero should be. Yeah. And I think, and the I, thing, think I think you're right is that I think the, the latter iterations, they've all lent into this thing of, you know, in order to terrify villains, he has to, you know, he has to terrify everybody. But actually, you know, you've you've seen very clearly that's no, that's not the case. And that in bringing it back to um, back to this this series, like I've I've literally just finished watching one of the very first episodes, and like he attends a school, um, and like, he's you no, know, he's talking to them all on a loud hailer because they all fucking love him. Yeah, and on and it's like, hang on, this isn't the same character. And I know, I, I know there are different iterations, and I know that you no, know, you know, there are multiverses and all the rest, of it, and that's kind of how they played into it, but. The whole, as you said, the thing is that you no, know, Joe Public isn't supposed to be afraid of Batman. No, absolutely not. And specifically, <laughs> you mentioned kids there, and that's something that really smart Batman writing gets this as well, right? You always know when you're reading somebody that understands Batman, when they get into the nature of his relationship with whoever his current Robin is. But more importantly, and we again, we actually had elements of this in the recent Matt Reeves film as well, where there are children involved. Batman really gets down to their level in a way that some other heroes are like, like Superman is this giant larger than life being. Yeah. And the yeah. same over in the Marvel verse where you've got Captain America and stuff like that. And they're these untouchable giant super yeah. beings, but there's something about Batman that will allow him. And it does happen a lot in comics as well. When a kid's involved in a case that he's cracking. And, and this is what I mean when you see artists that understand him and writers that yeah. understand him, he'll get down on his knees to their level and he'll talk to them because he yeah. knows at its core, at his very core, what it is like to be a scared child because that's who he is and that's always who he'll be. Yeah. And so when you get elements like this, like, yeah, where he's going to talk to kids at the school and they all love him, again, that's who, that's the core of the character. The core of the character isn't the fucking super dark emo goth. Don't get me wrong, that shit is cool. I love a bit of The Dark Knight as much as anybody else. I think it's phenomenal. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And I like that version of Batman too. But that's not the ultimate version of Batman to me. Mm. This is about as close to that as you get. I think if you could take this down a few notches, you'd have the most balanced iteration of the character that you get. Because yeah. in this show as well, you get all the fighting, you get the stunts, you get the gadgets. But you also get a fair bit of sleuthing and a bit of yeah. mystery work. Yeah. And that's an element of the character that so many people miss as well. And, and I think, yes, this was, well, it wasn't the first show through the door, in fact. It was about the second or third. Um, but this was the first one that really hit. And I think, I think it's actually captured the character so well that everybody's purposely tried to move away into the Dark Roman Slater. Because, yeah. to be honest, if you wanted to remake this show now, a, I don't think you could do it in the same manner unless you were taking the piss. No. And B, I just flat out don't think you could do it better. I don't no, think any right. superhero show has ever done it better. Like any single one. Like to, to be a proper larger than life comic book show. Mm. Yeah. I don't think it's ever been done better. Because this this perfectly understands a comic book narrative and the, the language of it. When we talked about the um, 90s Spider-Man animated series. Yeah. And we talked about the way that Spider-Man will swing through the city talking to himself and narrating what he's doing. Yeah. Like that felt weird because it because it felt like comic book language that was being yeah. given to you by a character and it felt wrong. But this is smarter than that because you have the omnipresent off-screen narrator who's basically reading you the box outs in yes. the comics. Yeah. Sometime later and things like this. Yeah. 
And then when we need exposition, and there's a lot of exposition in these episodes, they talk to each other in exposition. But you've got Batman and Robin bouncing off each other with the exposition. So they're able to do that with the villains as well. They'll always be a villain and their henchmen. Or some weeks you'll have two villains. So they're never just talking in this grand soliloquy. Yeah. So it doesn't feel clunky and it doesn't feel odd. It feels natural and smooth. Yeah. And it, everything just works. Everything about this show works. I don't think I, I've got the entire run on Blu-ray and I've watched it several times through and, and I will watch it several times through again. I, there is no single episode of this show that bores me. Mm. Some are way better than others, yeah. but there is no single episode of this show that you could put in front of me. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah skip that one I, like i cannot turn away from this show if it's on i am going to sit down and watch the whole thing yeah and as an adult watching it i think what you realize as well is you know as a child you're drawn to the the camp comic book action of it yeah and then we all went through that phase like i've i've said it was you know dumped on in in the 90s and 2000s but let's be honest we all went through that phase right we all looked at it and went what the fuck is that i don't understand yeah. what that is but once you punch through that and you get back to it, and I did very quickly um, because Batman's always been there for me. Um, what you realize is actually watching it as an adult, it's a fucking comedy. Yeah. And, and you don't get that as a child. You think it's an action adventure show because it is that as well, but actually it's not. It Even then, this knew full well what it was doing. Yeah. Like it absolutely, it's got his tongue so far in its cheek. And that's what makes it work. Everybody's having a fucking blast, yeah. and you can and I, see it. I think, like when you know, when you look at your rogues gallery, especially your your, your bigger ones, like you know, where you've got um, Caesar Romero or Burgess, Burgess Meredith, they are having the time of their fucking lives playing these characters oh, because they just get to go nuts. Yeah, it's, they can just do whatever the fuck they like. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and, and they've created these characters that have that have informed every iteration since. You know, like like Burgess Meredith's Penguin, which incidentally mostly created by accident, like all most of the mannerisms that come with the Penguin are created through happy accidents that he's had on set. Like yeah. he waddled, I think the story goes he was waddling because he couldn't walk in the shoes properly or something like that. Right. So all of a sudden he just starts That's waddling around. Now. Right? And then even right through to DeVito's Penguin, like that tracks all yeah. the way through. And even now with Colin Farrell's Penguin, the look of the character is still very similar he's still a rotund short guy yeah like they're iconic and yeah you're right they're clearly like they they're taking massive chunks out of the scenery and they're absolutely fucking loving it you know and i think that's probably been my problem when you've gone into later iterations i mean um davito's penguin was i thought no I, i i i thought at the time was better than i probably think it is now but you look at the um you look at the penguin in the animated series you look at the penguin in the arkham games and yeah, there's just bits they've taken. Well, we we don't like that bit. We'll take that bit out. But there's no, there's always still those nuances there. Yeah. And you you see you cannot have those. And, so, and again, kind of coming up to files, and you cannot have those characters without the work they did back back on this show. I know it's the same where we had um, not so much uh, Leto Shoker because we didn't get enough of him, but you no know, with you no know, with Ledger certainly with Nicholson. Ev you no know, all of that anarchy, all of that sort of madcap performance comes from mimicking Cesar Romero. Yeah, I mean Nicholson's Joker, it just tracks directly to Romero. He's yeah. he's doing a straight take or as straight a take as you can get on, on yeah. Romero's Joker. There's, there's no doubt about it. And you know, I think to a sense, so is Mark Hamill. He's just gone super dark with it. I think yeah. the essence of the character is still there, and look, that is unquestionably, as we've said many many times, and I think you know, as is accepted. Just in general, Mark Hamill yeah. is the Joker and will be for all time yeah. because he's taken what Caesar Romero gave us and just absolutely refined it. Like yes. he's got the diamond out of the lump of coal that Romero gave him to begin with. You know, he's, yeah. he's just absolutely. Uh, and, just, that, and that's not to diminish what Caesar Romero did in the first place. No, 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 not at all. What I'm saying is he gave him kind of that original unpolished version and Hamill's yeah. clearly just tracked that through and gone right. Yeah. He just needs a little bit more menace here and he yeah. just needs to be a little bit smarter. But again, he's got all of the same kind of mannerisms and, and that character tracks all the way through. And, you know, we're talking about what's happened with the Joker and the Penguin. But like, I mean, the real one, I think that you've got to look at here is you've got to look at what Frank Gorshin did with, with, Rizzler, with the Riddler. Yeah. 
and, and there's a character that just flat out probably wouldn't exist without him because he was a minor villain at best yeah before this show and goshin just blew him up like he all of a sudden he becomes your number two villain really if it wasn't yeah. a joker episode you wanted a riddler episode yeah and, Again, that until very recently, really, until well, until the Matt Reeves movie, like that character again has always remained the same. He's always been in a green question mark suit with a little bowler hat of sorts, and he's been this kind of larger than life, you know. And again, you look at the the Schumacher movies where Jim Carrey's doing his iteration, and yeah. it's just a Frank Ocean impression. That's what yeah. he's doing. Yeah, you know, we we owe so much of what we know about this character, who is, as we've said before. For me, my favorite hero of all time, but for most people, like one of the top three superheroes anybody's going to name if you stop them in the street. You ask yeah. somebody to name a superhero, Batman's going to be one of the first ones they come out with. Let's be let's be fair. Pre pre MCU, it would have been in in not necessarily this order, but it'd been Superman, Spider Man, Batman would be everybody's first three. I, I think they're probably still your top three, even with the MCU and even with the popularity of, of Iron Man. Now, I think they're still. I, I, they, I, I, I they're think iconic. They, they, they are iconic, but I think more more people would now think about it a bit more and go, "Oh well, that could no, it could be one of the others that we've we've had more exposure to in the last couple of years." Mm-hmm. And certainly, as, as you get, if you were to ask younger fans who are sort of getting into it through the MCU, then obviously they you know, they're going to be they're going to have more exposure because the you know the, the DC movies were that much darker and didn't really do as well. Um, which is another debate for another time. I personally thought they were pretty, you know, most for the most part they were good. Um, yeah. But yeah, so but yeah, absolutely. I mean, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man are always going to be the first three that that's spring to mind, and it depends on the day of the week which one comes first. Always Batman, if you ask me. Always, just always. Um, but that that's just me. Um, but yeah, all of that, and, and you know, you mentioned the MCU there as well. Like, you don't get an MCU if you don't get this show. Like, hmm. you just don't. This this kickstarted everything. Really, this was the first one that properly broke through. Yeah. Only had it only had a handful of episodes. There are nowhere near as many episodes as you think there are. No, I mean it ran. Um, that's it. Ran t- t- uh, three years or two years of thirty four ninety four. There's 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 hundred hundred twenty episodes, episodes, but they're only yeah. they're like over two seasons, and they did yeah. the second season split to get the third season and stuff like that, which is you know. But it's not you know today that is a short run for a TV show. You know it's. Yeah. As we've talked about with a lot well, of animated I mean, series, it's get as many out as you can so you can get into syndication. Yeah, basically. Get, it, get it through the door, yeah. And I mean, you, you're right. And I think that what this what this shows that before this, let's say, I think there was at least one um, version of Batman before this on TV. Um, but certainly you had like the George Reeves um, Superman and stuff like that. But nothing really landed as such. Was this the first one where you know, there was like an, an immense popularity, and it may be that you know, widest widest spread to, you know, availability of TV, um, especially you no know, color TV, you know that all these all these things would have contributed to it. But you're right, I, I, th- I don't think anything that came after it exists without this, because this shows actually you can recreate a comic book and you can recreate the characters, recreate the outlandish scenarios, all this sort of stuff. It can be done on TV, and people will watch it. And I think yeah. that's the key. Whereas you know, before you'd never had that. No. No, absolutely not. I mean, you had radio dramas and um, you had radio serials as well, which this owes a lot yeah. of its DNA to. But and, and the you know those early iterations of Batman were that as well. They were serials. But I think this was the first one that you know it was running for like twenty, thirty minutes, whatever the episodes were. They were between the yeah. two. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, about, about twenty-five minutes, I think. Yeah, and it was very loosely serialized, you know, like in as much as you would get a cliffhanger at the end of the episode. But there's no massive arc as such. It's just who's the villain yeah. going to be next week? You know, who's the special guest villain? Because that, you know, yeah. that was a thing on the show. It would be they'd be credited yes. as the special guest. Villain. Special guest. Yeah. Because you know? um, the one I watched um, just now, just before we started, um, that was you no know, guest star. Caesar Romero was the Joker. Like, Hang on, why did he guest star? I thought that was his. No, that was his shtick. But yeah, yeah, if that's enough, if that's the way they've done it. Yeah, they were they were special guest villains. That's how they would credit them. This week's special guest villain, Caesar Romero, is the Joker, because the Rogues Gallery is so fucking huge. And you know, one yeah. week is a Joker episode, next week is a Catwoman episode, next week is a Riddler episode, whatever. Um, so you'd get these cliffhangers, particularly for having like mm. two or three parters. But more or less, you would reset the status quo pretty much immediately at the start of the next episode. That phone would go again, then we'd slide down the pole again. And again, it's got that 
that kind of Pavlovian thing that you get in all of the best cartoons as well, where, you know, we yeah. know catchphrases like Thundercats, ho, I have the power. We know all of those because we're trained as a viewer to understand what happens yeah. when those catchphrases are spoken. And again, you know, that's borrowed from comic books. Don't get me wrong. That can go all the way back to Captain Marvel, the real Captain Marvel. All right. Not MCU's Captain Marvel. I mean, Shazam. Right. So that can go all the way back there. And then you kind of you get it here. And this is the first time I think it pervades properly into popular culture mm. where you understand that every week the bat phone's going to go. And every week they've got yeah. to lift up the Shakespeare bust. And every week they've got to slide down the pole. And then every week yeah. you get turbines to speed, atomic batteries to power, ready to roll out Batman. You get it every week. So you understand what all of this means. And it, there's something about it that just gets you pumped, you know? And, and again, th these are things that we've carried through now into our, just into our storytelling as a culture, yeah. you know? I, I, but this was the first place I was exposed to it. And I think probably the generation immediately after us skipped this and then i remember there being a resurgence again so there's probably another generation that got this but there was already yeah. other stuff around it and i think yeah. now it's come full circle again but i don't think it's introducing anybody to these conceits anymore because i think you're right that is now no. the mcu <laughs> that is what people yeah now see superheroes as but certainly for us like when i was watching it this mm. show would have been 20 years old and yeah it didn't feel it at all like if you if you put a twenty no. year old show in front of us now, which hello, that's what we do here. Um, some yeah, of them, that's SpongeBob. We did it two weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, some of them don't age so well, but I can yeah. even watch this now as a fuck. Hang on, I've got to do maths. Sixty year old show, fifty sixty year old show. Yeah. Um, to me, this still feels fresh. You know, I can as I say, I've watched yeah. it numerous times as well, and it always feels. And, and I think part of that is because it's so campy and because it's so silly and because it breaks the fourth wall so much and because it doesn't take itself seriously and it yeah. doesn't really age, you know, not in the same way that a more emo take on this character does because you look at it and it, like yeah. when you look at the Matt Reeves Batman in 20 years time, you're just going to be going, oh, that is just some fucking mid 2000s emo bullshit that somebody's piped out. And don't get me wrong, yeah. I love that movie. But that's going to be very much rooted in its time. Yeah, same as the Burton yeah. movies are as well. They're very much rooted in their time. Yeah. Yes. This this exists in its own universe out of time because it's just so fucking mental. It, it really is. Like it wasn't like anything else at the time, and I don't think it's like anything else now. It's had many imitators. It's never been bettered. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I, I think, think a large part the, of that. One. I, I was going to say the the thing with it as well is if you look at it from the sort of the non Batman of it then. So you know, you look at the the Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson, the sort of the social aspect of it. Yes, okay, no, there are there are, there are things there which which no which do date and you know, things like the cars date and so the you know, the fashions date and things like that. But actually once you get into the Batman side of it, whereby it's Batman fighting against Rose Rose Gallery, it's all the same anyway. Then the you know, technology changes and threat and but you no know, the threats change. But it's still at essence, Joker is you no know, Joker is doing robberies to distract from something else riddler's set some sort of you know, insane booby trap penguins just hired a shitload of thugs you know it's yeah. it doesn't change oh. and you could know and so when we talked about power rangers where you know you have the action sequences which are lifted from super sentai and stuff like that you could do almost do the same here where you lift out the batman sequences drop them onto affleck yeah and, and his and his bruce wayne and as long as the voices match nobody would notice any fucking difference anyway I haven't seen it, but I am willing to bet my fucking house on the fact that somebody's taken that warehouse scene from Batman Superman, uh, mm. where he just busts in and he's kicking the shit out of everybody. I'm willing to bet somebody's taken that and put zap, kapow, splat. Probably. The Batman 66 music over it. And now I've said that, I, I need that in my life. I need to see that. I'm pretty sure that exists. <laughs> and if it doesn't, I'm going to will it into existence. So I'm going to fucking do it myself if nobody else has done it, because... I really need to see that. Um, but talking about those fight scenes, kind of mentioned them briefly already and how they look like comic books and stuff. But one of the things that really hit me when I did my first rewatch when I got the Blu-rays, which was about probably about eight or nine years ago now, it was just when I was moving into this house. So yeah, eight years yeah, ago. I think I, yeah, about eight years ago, I got that Blu-ray set. 
the very first thing that jumped out to me is actually how good the fucking stunt work is in this show. Like, mm, people yeah. take the piss out of it, right? Because wonky sets and thrown punches and stuff like that because it was the 60s. Mm. But actually, like, all of this shit has been choreographed and it's all being done for real in front of your face. Yeah. And I, I, I say this with absolute conviction. I mean every word of what I'm about to say. I'm not saying this ironically or taking the piss. You might as well watch WWE because mm, yeah. that's what's going on here. These are people just kicking the shit out of each other on camera and pulling their punches. This isn't yeah. being cut around. This isn't CGI. Yeah. This is people doing actual stunt work. And somebody's yeah. choreographed these fights. And normally, you've just got locked off cameras. You yeah. haven't got any flashy cameras. You normally get a sort of slight Dutch aerial shot. Yeah. And they'll come in for the close-ups as well, and they'll use the zap kapow to mask the cuts between them. That's what happens when yeah. you see those. Yeah. And it's really fucking smart, and it works really fucking yeah. well. The yeah, action right. sequences are excellent in this. Yeah, and I think that, especially when you get some, you no, know, when you do get some of the bigger ones where you've got, you know, Batman and Robin will be fighting half a dozen guys. Yeah. It, it is really effective, because as I said, the temptation now would be you cut around, and there's lot, you know, lots of fancy camera movement, there's lots of lots of funny angles, and then, you, you know, you've... you've You'll you'll cut away no, you'll you'll cut away at key moments. You mm. don't get that here. What you do get an actual fight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, no, it, as you no, as you would get like a stage fight of everyone in a theater where you can't cut away from it, you can't cut around it. So everybody has to be doing something. Something has to be happening all the time. The fact that we might be filming over there doesn't mask the fact that actually over there Robin's kicking the fuck out of somebody as well. Yeah, and you can see it all. You 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 can see it all in camera, especially because they spend a lot of time on them wides. Yeah. Um, so I love watching the fight scenes from this. I think the music works really well with it. Again, also yeah. that's something you know. Yeah, it's got its own style, and people take the piss out of it. But when you lay that kind of, in some sometimes it's almost like a bossa nova funk that goes yeah. over the top of it. It's really really odd. Yeah, but it works really well. You know, so yeah, like the fight is something I absolutely love. But I think the real key to the show for me, the heart of this show, and Again, this this is something that's that's massive for me. Again, we talk about Kevin Conroy when we talk about you know Mark Hamill as well. And Kevin Conroy will unquestionably always be Batman to me, and he's my favorite. Yeah. But Adam West is just so fucking amazing in this show. And mm. I think in terms of physically performing the character on screen, I still don't think anyone's got anywhere near as close as he, like his Bruce Wayne is charismatic and charming and his Batman looks yeah. like a fucking giant yeah. amongst people and carries himself with this kind of authority yeah. and like again yeah he's not skulking in shadows but yeah. he's a he, fucking he's big dude yeah and he's like well, look at I never realized actually I mean I, I never realized um until well until very recently watching uh starting to watch back it like Adam West no he was very well put together you, you know he, he, yeah. he was he was a he was a broad looking dude, but I don't know whether they surrounded him with midgets or whether he was actually re- ridiculously tall. He but is yeah, very he, tall. He, you know, he is very much statuesque. He towers over people. Like even though yeah. when you so when you got your you know, your, your um your Rose Gallery, and obviously they're supposed to be like a diametric opposite, so that you no, know, they 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 put they pose a particular challenge to Batman, so that, you know, they're going to be on a level with him. Even then, he's he you no. Know, it's shot in such no, I don't. Know, it's shot in such a way anyway. But you, yeah, even even when you get your wides, he is just a big fucking dude, and he doesn't look it. And especially no, as, obviously as you get no, as you get older as well, you, so you do tend to sort of shrink or shrivel anyway. No, no, in more recent years, like when he was doing things like Family Guy, and obviously you know, doing the, the appearances for that, he doesn't look like a big dude. Yeah. But actually, yeah, go back to the sixties, and the motherfucker was no, and you, he was you solid. Have to, yeah, you have to bear in mind as well, like when you see your Batman today, those. Bat suits are fucking padded out and muscles are built are in. Yeah, oh, fuck. You never so guess, would you? You know, you know those nipples, they're not actually George Clooney's nipples. I don't know if you realize. Oh, motherfucker. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, so those suits are padded out, right? So the guys look bigger than they are as well. Like you put one yeah. of those suits on Adam West, he's gonna look twice as big again. You yeah. know? Whereas, you know, like Batman's Affleck, for instance, looks like a fucking tank. Like, he looks like if you yeah. ran into him, you would just bounce straight off, right? Because, again, yeah. he's a very fucking tall, broad dude. And yeah. I think he's probably the nearest in stature. You put that suit on Adam West. And, again, he's yeah. going to look like just... It's going to look ridiculous in that. Yeah, he's going to look massive, right? So so there's that about it as well. Like, for a guy that's just 
in Lycra. Yeah. He commands the screen with that presence. And, yeah. you know, you want to talk about a leading man. Like, there, he's every ounce a leading man. Like, how, like, obviously, he's associated with the show, and so he will be a legend forever and always. But yeah, how he didn't have a better career is really beyond me. Like, yeah. He's I, I think such the problem a is like a movie star in a TV show, you know. Yeah, I think the the problem would be there that people will have seen him. And go, oh, well, that's Batman. He can't do anything else without well, giving a him a shot. And and, and yeah. no, he, the, there's there's nothing to say that he couldn't do anything else. Other than you know, people go, oh, he's Batman. We don't really want him. We don't want the association of a really popular TV show. No. And, and that isn't to say he didn't either, because he did have a career. Yeah. You know, he yeah, wasn't it just, just wasn't Batman. What it, it wasn't what it should have been though. And I think part of it would have been. People will have been afraid that he they were going to get Batman, and they didn't necessarily want that. Yeah, and and I think not helped by his very particular voice as well, and yes. very yeah. particular kind of way of speaking, which yeah. again makes the character like it. I, and it, 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 it does. I mean, I was I said, watched um, watched a couple of the last couple of days, and his cadence is very much yeah, it's it's, it's unique, and no, you you know that's Adam West speaking, and. It it does make me laugh actually when you go into all the sort of the various iterations of Batman that are followed, whereby they all have to have a voice like this, so yeah. you can't tell it's Bruce Wayne. And he said, like, "Fuck that." Yeah, Batman talks like this because Bruce Wayne is Batman, and that's how Bruce Wayne talks. Yeah, and he doesn't yeah. care. No. And no, I mean, no, and they just they go, "Oh, fuck it, what's it matter?" And it's it's the Clark Kent with glasses, isn't it? You know, nobody's going to notice. Yeah, it's 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 the misdirection of it all, and. That's an argument, actually. It's more Superman argument than Batman argument. But that's an argument I find myself in regularly with people. Mm. Um, some people who appear on shows with us as well. Um, but I, <laughs> I find myself having that argument regularly because I'm like, no, it's not about the fact that it's just a pair of glasses or it's just a voice modulator. It's about that person physically transforming their body language and their personality yeah. and who they are. So nobody is seeing the same you're not seeing clark kent and you're not seeing bruce wayne yeah because when clark kent is superman he's you no know, he's, he's his chest is puffed out and he's up you know he's standing you know, straight backed and you no know, chin up yeah. and all the rest of it when he's clark kent he, you know, he's a lot more humble he's you no know, he's a lot more down he's you no know, he's hunched he's rushing around you don't get to see it and i mean I, I remember reading something relatively recently whereby again looking at that argument going well no everybody would know that clark kent is superman just no superman's clark kent just without the glasses but like Charlie Chaplin entered the Charlie Chaplin look like contest and didn't even place in the top five. <laughs> you know, Do- Dolly, Do- yeah, Dolly Parton did a, a, an impersonation contest and came third. You know, and it's like it's like you know, pe- people you, you just wouldn't you wouldn't associate the two together. So you know, like why would Charlie Chaplin be in a Charlie Chaplin look like contest? Clearly, yeah. it's just some dude, and others actually may may mimic him better or something, or something like that. So you know, it's just one of those things. Well, people are stupid. People are, no, if you're not looking for it, you're not going to see it. And it's and it's misdirection, which at the end of the day, if that isn't at the heart of Batman as a character, then what is? Like, yeah. if Batman isn't theatrical, then he's nothing. <laughs> like, that's you know, again, the the modern iterations are all like, oh yeah, he moves in the shadow. He is the night. Nice... No, he's not. He's a fucking. He's he literally wants to be seen. And again, that was one well, of the things I think yeah. since this one. The one that's come closest, the, the iteration that's come closest to nailing that again is the recent Matt Reeves one, where he's just like yeah. front and center, like, no, I am going to run at you as quickly as I can and just yeah. try and stop me. Have a yeah, go. You're going to see me coming. Yeah, yeah, you uh, will yeah. see me coming. And I mean, I, I recent, I haven't read it for years. I recently reread um, Death in the Family. Right. And again, they're out in the fucking African desert. Yeah, and he's still got Him his mask Robin on. No, he's, he's still got his costume on. And no, and it's like, hang on. If this this is some new skulks in the shadows and hides and he's stealthy and all the rest of it, this motherfucker is turning up at the UN. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, this it's not the same. But actually, it's, it's interesting you bring that up, right? Because I I love Death in the Family. It's, it's one of my favorite books. But there's all of that stuff in the desert where he's bare chested, yeah, <laughs> with his mask on, and and that actually that you know he is he is depicted quite a lot like that in the comics, right? You do see him leave the mask on quite a lot. But again, you can't imagine any other um, real life adaptation of Batman, one of the better words, than live action adaptation of Batman doing that. But no. if Adam West rocked around bare chested with the cowl on, you would 100% buy it. You, would, and you wouldn't oh, expect absolutely. anything else. Like you yeah. would expect him to do it in the cowl. You couldn't see fucking 
you know, Michael Keaton doing that. You couldn't see Clooney's Batman even doing that. No. You you definitely couldn't see any of the modern iterations like Bale or, or any of those doing no. it. But you I, I mean, totally to be fair, would buy Adam West. I mean, I think with the exception of um of the of the recent Matt Reeves one, like none of them could anyway, because the way this the way the suit and the cow was done together, because it's all part of like a helmet and it all links to everything else, it'd be so fucking heavy. You wouldn't be able to wear it. You need you need the suit to hold it up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, all of that is really just a roundabout way of me saying, like, I think what I consider to be Batman is informed completely and utterly by Adam West and Kevin Conroy. And, and that's hmm. that's my Batman, is it? Like, and again, part of that, even with Kevin Conroy, when you think about it, like that voice is iconic now. Yeah. But the cadence isn't all that different. It's just the no, voice not. is a lot lower. But again, I, I think that's he's taken a that's cue something... there. Yeah, and like when you when you look at the movies, you know, you look at um, you look at Keaton, you look at Kilmer, you look at Clooney. Um, that they, they've just completely ignored all of that, and they've gone, ah, well, yeah, but I want to put my own take on it, so I'm going to make him sound different. Yeah. But then, it doesn't really make any difference, does it? Whereas, no, whenever you whenever you think of Batman speaking, it's going to be one of those two. It's going to be West, or it's going to be Conroy, because of the the way they portray the character. And I, th- I don't think that for all the all the films we've had, I don't think any of them actually capture Batman anywhere as near as well as the series does. No, they absolutely don't. And and part of that, again, to come back to West's performance and his cadence, like that's how he speaks. Um, and and this isn't like don't be wrong, he's gonna be putting an element of that on. But I don't yeah. think this was necessarily a conscious character decision for him. No. I wonder whether he was directed to kind of slow his words down and go with that cadence a bit though, because one of the things it does lend to the character as well, which is one of the most important aspects of the character for me is when he's doing his sleuthing and when he's doing his detective work, this is still the only iteration of Batman I've ever seen where it feels like he's really fucking thinking, like he's thinking four moves ahead because the way he talks, he takes these kind of pregnant pauses. And it's almost like like, like, his mouth is trying to catch up with his brain. Exactly that. Yeah, that's exactly how it feels. It like his brain is already 10 steps ahead and he's just got to stop a minute and let it catch up. And not only that, I mean, I think that the the way he speaks as well, um, there's there's far more authority to his voice than you get anywhere else. Yes, just definitely. because you do get those pregnant pauses, you do get them. Um, that you, you you get the you know he'll he'll engage with people rather than talking at them, which is what we've ten, we've tended to have since. You know, um, yeah. Con- Conrad's Batman um, does it a bit. Um, in the in the new one, you get it a bit. But generally, it's. Batman talks over people. Batman talks at people, not to them, or not certainly not yes. with them. Yeah, and and again, I think that's a big part of that, actually. And I know everybody hates Batman and Robin, right? And we've looked at it on the network as well. Um, but a big part of that as well, as I mentioned at the start, is because he has a Robin, and, and yeah. that softens the character and allows him to bounce off people and allows him to talk and communicate with people. And actually, again, Reeves has kind of done that kind of gone there a little bit in his yeah um you know but otherwise if you've just got say batman and gordon for instance then the power dynamic is completely off because yeah. batman's always in charge there yeah whereas robin being the snot-nosed kid is always able to just, like not quite usurp him but just, yeah he can talk back to him and get away with it you know yeah. and, and so there's something about the dynamic and and we haven't actually even talked about bird ward yet and no that's another just huge part of this show that as a character, like, yes, this Robin is annoying. He's yeah. he's intentionally annoying. Okay. And that's what everybody thinks about when they think of Robin and everybody goes, oh, I fucking hate Robin. No, you don't. You hate this version of Robin and you hate this version of Robin because he's so G willikers. Yeah. Because that's just what it was at the time. Okay. Yeah. But again, in the context um, of this show, it works. It His Robin works with that yeah. Batman. And I think as well, I mean, we talked about this on Better Than Mario last uh, last time out when we talked with Beast of Bunny and the character of, I think his name was Doug. Yes. And and Helen and myself hate, well, we all, we all hated the character. Uh, because, but that's the way he was, that's the way he was written and played. And yes. you get to say, that's the same with, with Burt Ward here. He's playing the character as he's been given. And I'm fairly yes. sure that he's not that annoying in real life, if he's still alive. But what's the life? No, I don't believe he is. Um, um but you know so i mean you can't it's yes okay the character is annoying but that's a character not a person oh yeah i'm not saying Bert, and, I, 
No, and I'm not saying Burt Ward's annoying. I, no, and I think that's where a lot of criticism comes, that people people found Burt Ward annoying. Yes. Oh, they, but they say it's not Burt Ward they're finding annoying, it's the character, which is kind of the point. It, it is exactly the point, and it's why so many people as well, again, will dump on Robin. Every time Robin is mentioned in a modern mm-hmm. iteration of Batman, they're like, oh, no, fucking Robin, we don't want Robin. Truth of it is, Batman always needs a Robin. He's always at his best when there is yes. a Robin. Okay? Yeah. And this is just an iteration of that character, but it's the one that we need for this because yeah. Robin has always got to be that reflection of innocence in Batman that I was talking yeah. about. He's got to be that kid that Batman's trying to protect. He's got to essentially be little 10-year-old Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Okay, that's what Robin's got to be. And that works for this version of Batman because it's not super dark. So yeah, he needs to be excitable and he needs to love the fact that he's fighting crime and, and all of yeah. that. The fact that he looks vaguely like Tinkerbell probably doesn't help. Not um, really, no. But again, that's that's the character design of the era. And again, that's, you know, Robin is in bright. It's fucking called Robin. Like, yeah. what else do you want? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but yeah, it it's. I think that's the thing that annoys me about this show the most. Not not Robin himself, not the character. I I, I really like Bert Ward, as I say. I think I think he's essential to the show. I think he's integral to the show, and it doesn't yeah. work without him. Yeah, I think you're right. But it's it's the connotation that's come with that character since yeah. then, and, and especially people who don't understand that character. Yeah. And especially a lot of people who particularly seem to think they dislike Dick Grayson when they don't. They just dislike this version of Robin. Dick Grayson's actually... Yeah fucking badass like mm. just not here <laughs> that's, yeah that's the thing um but it if you take him out of this show it just doesn't work like you mm-hmm. need the interplay between the two of them that's yeah the you, need, you need you need a sort of foil effectively yes. it's, it's like, especially um that's the the one i watched um just before we came on um joker was rigging like um coin machines and like you no know, jukeboxes and all this sort of shit and you see start off and you know um, Dick Grayson's in school, and it's this first thing happens at school. And there's some really dumb shit goes on where they, where you know, they, they put you put a dime into a into a, a milk machine instead of a carton of milk, like silver dollars were coming out. And rather than going, oh, hang on, I can make some money and pocket them all, the stupid fucker goes, hey, everybody, the machine's paying out, and everybody swarms it. So, but no, Dick sort of stays stays back from that. But then they even get to a point where they they write a, they write him into the episode so that him and Batman can interact. Because he still no, he still needs his sidekick. He still needs that you know, that person to, to interact with. It's so they go, well, well, okay, well, he can't be there because he's in school, and we've established he's in school. And if he's not in school, people can ask questions. Okay, how do we get him in? And they 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 need to work him in, so they do. And it's it's you no, know, it's a very clever way of doing it. You no, know, a lot of times it would you no, know, and I think they did it far too often. It became a bit hackneyed at times, but you know, it was it's just an easy way, and you wouldn't see that now. There'd be some convoluted way of getting him out of there. To them, for then Robin to be involved in the episode, and yeah. I think it's you know, such a simple way of doing. It. You know, well, obviously, you know, Batman knows who. You know, he knows that it's the school that he's in. So, oh, okay, well, yeah, call a meeting with your student council because I know he's on that. So get them in, and I'll talk to them. So then that yeah. way I can take them to one side and say, right, okay, well, what are we doing? This is what, and yeah, it's you no, know, it's it's so important. To, and as you go through, it becomes more important. And I think that. As over time it has diminished, and a lot of people's exposure um, to Batman is limited to the films we've had. Mm. So, you know, we had two with Robin; they were shit um, through no fault of Robin's, actually. To be fair, um, no, well, through some, best thing some in fault of the Robins, films but... that he's in, I think Chris O'Donnell's really good in them films. To be fair, yeah. um, you know, but yeah, so I mean, and it's just one of those because those films happen to not do so well that they've shied away from doing it, you know, from bringing it back and doing it again. So, I mean, no, yeah, it. it <laughs> When you get into it, and you get into you know, even with the with the Arkham games, that extended cast. Um, no, by the time you have Nightwing, you have um, you have Red Hood, you have uh, you have Robin, and you have Batgirl. They're so important, and no, and going forward, then they've they even refranchised those. You've got um, what are they? Got Gotham City Knights or something? The, the next one's called, yeah, isn't yeah. it? So they they've Gotham even Knights, gone. Yeah. No, they've 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 recognised that and gone. Actually, Batman's always going to be better when he's supported rather than when he's no in his own skulking around events. Yeah, I, I think hopefully WB are realizing that now. Uh, we seem to be getting wider Bat family in, in the cinematic universe now as well. Yeah. Um, of sorts. But again, this hit that straight out of the gate. Like by the time we get to season two, you know, Yvonne Craig shows up as well. 
And then yeah. we've got Batgirl as well as Rob. Like she's not in that many episodes. And you always know which one she's in because it's the fucking coolest thing. Like, and I used to love it as a kid as well. You knew it was Batgirl because you saw the cycle <laughs> in the credits. Yeah. Like you see her bike come past, which was wicked. Again, just like a, yeah. it, it's just Pavlovian. It's like, oh, wicked. It's a Batgirl episode. Brilliant. <laughs> Because yeah. she wasn't in all of them, but when she was, the credits were different. Um, so, yeah. you know, they do start to bring the Bat family into it. They were characters of the Bat family that only exist in this show, even. Yeah. Um, what was the fucking housekeeper? There's a housekeeper in the Har- show it's as like well. Harriet or Henrietta or something like that? Aunt Harriet. It's Aunt Harriet. Of course it is. How could I forget a name? Yeah, it's Aunt Harriet, right? It doesn't exist anywhere else. <laughs> they just yeah. drop her in here because occasionally they need a fucking matriarch popping around because this is a swinging bachelor pad. And they need a matriarch yeah. to come and give them a slap. Um, yeah, so on, on on the wiki page, you've got Harriet Cooper, Dick Grayson's maternal aunt. She first appeared in the comics two years before the series to give Bruce and Dick a reason to be secretive about their identities. Yep, exactly. And then she just goes away, and we never see her anywhere else. She just... Yep. I'd, forgot, I'd forgotten she'd existed until, I say, until I, I put, put these on in the last couple of days. Yep. I'd so forgotten she even existed. She's basically it because occasionally they need a matriarch, and basically just so it's not a great big sausage fest, pretty much like... Batgirl showing up as well. Um, yep. And then, of course, we've got Alan Napier, who I can't believe we're an hour in, haven't talked about. Like, we've mentioned everybody else's performance in the show and how iconic they've yep. become. There is still, for my money, in no other iteration, there is no Alfred that comes anywhere near as close. Like, no. This is Alfred for me, like, and, and always will be, I think. Um Again, yeah. just absolutely like, and it's an iteration of that character. He really is purely just a distinguished butler here. Oh, really. he, he, he's entirely just a valet. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's Yeah, like, <laughs> I think that um, it's Michael Goff, isn't it, in the films? In the, the it is. The, yeah. yeah, I think he was pretty good. Um, certainly he's very than, good. Certainly yeah. better than anything we've had since. Um, the ones we've had since, I really haven't rated at all. Not because the performances were good, just they didn't, they weren't the right character. They, you know, they, they didn't, they weren't it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm the same as you. I think Alan Napier is absolutely the, defi- the, the definitive Alfred. And well, you saw it's it's quite funny when you have iterations and you have ca- characters who are so iconic. Every, no, everyone will have their Batman based on no, their their sort of first introduction. Everyone will have their James Bond. Everyone will have their Doctor Who based on their no, their first one. But yeah, for me, no, Alfred is th- this is Alfred. If you were to, no you to start drawing together your sort of no, your, your the people you, you see in your head for no, for these various characters. The majority of them for Batman come from this show. They really uh, do, and yeah. certainly, you know, with I can't even rem- I, like I can't even remember what animated series Alfred looks like, which is ridiculous because I've seen it that many times. I should know. Yeah, but um, pretty uh, much thing of Alfred, it's it... yeah. I mean, he, he pretty much looks as Alfred should look, but it's just all of that comes back to this, really. You know. Um, I, I think what you get with Napier that you don't get with the others is you get the distinguished gent more. Yeah. And Michael Goff comes close, um, but you get the distinguished gent. Now, that's a one-note depiction of the character. There's a lot more going on with Alfred, which they've leaned into more in the in the more recent iterations. But I, I think there's something about being a kid as well and having the, like, he's the adult the show yeah. basically isn't he like he's the grown-up in amongst yeah. all this so i think there's just something about being a kid and seeing this kind of kindly uncle sort of character yeah. really that's that's the grown-up that and not only that having this grown-up that then waits on your hand and foot yeah I, I think there's just something about it that feels i guess sort of secure and safe and he's yeah. like a little bit author- authoritarian but he's also caring yeah I, and so i, I think it's probably just because of the age I was when I was mm. watching this because, yeah. you know, that was just, and, and that will always be now what I consider Alfred to be. Yeah. So he's, he's definitely, he is the, the one out of all of them that I would definitely say is the most iconic depiction of any of these characters. Yeah. Um, the others of all, whether they've been bettered or not is, is a matter for discussion. Cause as we said, every iteration is different, but yeah. I, I certainly do think, as we said back at the start, Every iteration since has drawn off these but yeah, without and, a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, and I, th- I think I, d- I think in terms of sort of later iterations, I don't know whether they've been bettered. I think the majority of them are just so different that it's difficult to compare. 
no it's, it's not okay no it's not in a lot of cases it's not right we've got alpha on a page alpha in, no alpha on screen there's no this the iterations are so different it's hard no you can't really compare michael kane's um alfred to uh, alan apius because they're so the, the character themselves they're built so much differently they're, they're their interactions with Bruce Wayne are so much different that you can't yeah. really say, well, hang on, yeah, he did that better because they're just not the same character. They've got the same name, effectively. Which one of the things we, we've we mentioned, certainly I know a lot on who wins when we've had to decide which iteration of character we're taking and stuff like that. Yeah. It's one of the things when you get particularly superheroes like this that have been around for generations now and have had mm-hmm. multiple... Batman's probably been adapted more than anybody else. Like, there seems to be a new yeah. fucking Batman every two or three years, but... There are so many different iterations of this character across all media. Mm. And there are so many different facets of the character. Like, whatever you like in that character or whatever you're looking for, there's a Batman for you. Yeah, And it's the same with all of the other characters as well. It's the same anytime something gets rebooted or sequelized or whatever it's going to do when there's a new cast, whatever happens. And and that happens a lot at the moment because nostalgia is a big uh, selling point. And people get really fucking angry. Mm. And it's just, look, if, if it's not for you, just don't worry about it just yeah. go with it like i personally do not care for the nolan verse mm. it is not for me it is not what i want from batman so i just don't bother with it i yeah. just won't bother right it's fine i if you ask me my opinion on it i will gladly give you a two-hour tirade on why i think it's absolute wank mm. right but otherwise you do you you yeah, love it exactly. great fine i don't i'd rather watch this to be honest i'd rather watch two hours of this watch any of the nolan films because that's closer to what I want from the character. Yeah, and exactly. This is fun. Those other ones are just fucking depressing. I'm fucking dour, so, aren't they? Yeah. So I'd rather watch this. Um, speaking about fun as well, we haven't talked about it yet, and I can't believe we haven't, but we need to talk about that theme tune as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because again, like, you want an iconic theme tune. Like, this is it. Yeah. Like, this is I mean, this, this is up there, no, in, in terms of instant recognition, this is up there with fucking James Bond and Star Wars. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, and, and it's also one of those things where I think, again, you say Batman, to anybody of the right age, anybody yeah. that knows this show. I, I, in fact, no, I think you could probably even still do it with kids today because I oh, think yeah. Yeah, kids today even know na 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 Batman. That's just... Yeah. That's part of the character now because well, well, this that's it. song. So and I mean, like, even no, I've, I've I've seen it with um, fr- with friends of ours and, and even with our two. Like, if you have a grand a grandmother who you call Nana, at some point you will sing the fucking song. Yeah, bananas. You'll do it with as well. You'll yeah. have Nana, Nana, Nana. Like, yeah. At least cars. We used to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, you can't avoid it. It's impossible. No, you can't. Um, <laughs> And I to a point where like I, I we came in from like kids to activities on a on a Tuesday. So we came in and I was like, right, I'm eating my food, I need to watch some more Batman. So I'll put it on. Didn't tell them what it was. I just had, had my iPad on the on the table. They were sat opposite me, so they couldn't see what was on my screen. As soon as it started playing, number two, you watching Batman. You just know. Yeah, it's it it's um as it's it's part of it. No, it's part of life. It's not no, it's not a case of it's something you know or you don't. Everybody knows that fucking theme song. It is the ultimate earworm. I like. I don't think it's a particularly good thing. No, no. no. <laughs> if I'm no, honest, it's really not. I mean, you you look at some. I mean, even some of the shows we've done. I mean, we've, this is this is show ninety nine now, so we've done ninety nine different theme tunes. And this Batman yeah, eight one. Uh, yeah, you know, th- this is nowhere near the most. No, it, it's it's the one. It's probably the most iconic we've done, but by no means is it the best. And musically, it's fairly basic. It's no. It, it just it does what you need it to do, and that that's it. Whereas you know you look at you know you look at stuff like Power Rangers and Ulysses, where you got these big sweeping scores and the orchestras and they've you know the power chords and all the rest of it. Mm. And this is just like, yeah, all right, fine. We just want to get on with the show. But what it does, um, obviously, it's the earworm. So to say, it's become yeah. synonymous with the character now, and it's become synonymous with any iteration of the character. Yeah, like even. You know, again, Nolan verse, like you can't show people a picture of Christian Bale and go, who's that? Right. And somebody say Batman, your head's already going, na, 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 yeah. na, na. It's impossible, right? You can't show anybody anything to do with Batman without yeah. that being in the back of their head, right? Yes. Yeah. And the better theme is unquestionably the animated series theme. Yes. Which is basically the Burton verse theme, as we know. But in the same way that when you hear that music, you can instantly see. The animated Batman yeah. standing on top of a rooftop in Gotham with a clap of lightning behind him. Like, you yeah. see that. As soon as you hear the opening kind of 
strolling guitar for this. As soon as yeah. you get the, do, 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 do. you can see Batman and Robin running towards the screen. Yes, absolutely. Like, immediately. It, immediately. It just conjures that image in that time. But I can even see the colors. Yeah. Like, I, I can see it all, you know. And again, it, it's just because it's it's such an earworm and it's so, it, the tone fits the show so perfectly. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, um, it's just, yeah, it's not the best theme tune, but it is, it's got to be like, if you're talking about what a theme tune is, yeah, it's got to be one of the best of all time, surely. Like musically, it's not the greatest or anything, but in terms of like, you want to play it and go watch that, yeah. everybody instantly just goes. That yeah. Thing. And the thing is, like, as, as, as an audio, as a theme as well, I'm not, I'm not talking like a theme song, but just as a, as a musical theme for the show. Every time they break, they just start breaking into the into the sort of the, the um the, the the guitar at the start of it. And when, when you get the fights and you get that, you get over that. Where you get the um no 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 when it's sort of changing scenes, and you get the bat logo spin out. Yeah, all okay, of that. Yeah. It's all completely iconic. Yeah, and you hit you know and even now with my piss poor you know, rendition of it, you'll know people will know what that's supposed to be. Absolutely, those those transitions where the logo spins into the screen and spins out yeah. those are as iconic as a star wars wipe yeah to me like I, I know exactly what that is and if somebody like it's something that gets emulated a lot and if somebody does that yeah. again the visual and the audio language immediately tells you they're riffing on batman 66 that's what they're doing yeah um then of course we haven't talked about the car either which <laughs> is the most ridiculous looking batmobile they've ever there's ever been but it's uh, fucking great again, isn't it? It's absolutely fucking amazing. It, I don't, I don't know if it's the most ridiculous. I think the the Burton Batmobile, where you had the big fucking fins on it, was pretty damn ridiculous. No, that's the best Batmobile has ever been. Like, well, I don't know. I quite like the new one. The the like you, you're talking about the Anton first Batmobile. Hmm. Like, it's fucking incredible that. Like, and that is basically just animated series Batmobile again. Like with the with the giant fins on the back, like. Yeah, I get what you're saying. It looks pretty ridiculous. Yeah, but this, uh, it, you know, it doesn't have fucking bubbles. Or, no, <laughs> you know, the the, like, the, Bat, the Batmobile in this always reminds me. There's an episode of The Simpsons where it's amazing how many of these shows come back to The Simpsons. Um, but there's an episode where Homer meets his long lost, long lost brother, um, and he get he, he designs a car, and he basically does the Hank Scorpio. No, it's um, Danny DeVito does the voice of his brother. He's in two episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, um, yeah. And like, he, he's, he's like a big car exec. So he, he, yeah. he tells home he can design a car. And he describes it, and it's all sleek and all the rest of it. And then, when, and then they say, no, nothing like that. He rips up the design, and he draws his own. And it's it's the fucking Batmobile. It's it's it's, it's um, You get bubbles for where people snow. So there's a bubble for the front. There's a bubble for the back seat. You can't hear the kids. And then you've got the really angular, you know, the really angular fins on the side. <laughs> A bit like Ecto ones, so, not I mean as over the top as on the um the, the Burton Batmobile. You get the little sort of the little sort of um Oldsmobile type fins you, you had, and it's like that all, that episode always reminds me of, that, of this Batmobile because it's the most ludicrous fucking thing you could you could imagine. But it's yeah. it's it's what it's supposed to be. It's what it says on the tin. It's it's Batman's car, but it's all, it's got it's got the bat phone in it, and it's no, it's got fucking nuclear reactor so it can go really fast, and it's got compartments for all his little gadgets and shit. And it's got a spare seat because let's be let's be honest, as we said, he needs Robin. Yeah. So all of a sudden you see you know you see the fucking tumbler and all this stuff where you know it's it's basically a, a single seater tank. Yeah. That's not what you need. This no, no this mean, is very much okay. We have a car. Let's do no. We have a car and we can get people around it. So let's let's use it and not fuck it up too much. And by the time you get to um you know you get to Nolan you get to Batfleck then they are tanks. I know yeah. coming but coming away from that with Matt Reeves and no, it's 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 I can't remember what car it is, but it's basically an ad- adapted road vehicle, mm. which is again what this no, what this one is because it's it's truer to that character. I mean that car, that car is very similar to this one. Like yeah. it doesn't have the bubbles and stuff, no. but in its look, again, there's there's clear yeah. callbacks, there's clear influence, and as much as I love the the Burton Batmobile. That's definitely my favorite one. I think it looks fucking incredible. Again, like you mentioned the Batmobile to me. And this is as a reader of comics as well. So I'm used to seeing the fucking bat head on the front of the car and stuff. Don't mm. get me wrong. You mentioned the Batmobile to me. And the first place my head goes isn't the Burton car that I love. It's this. Oh, it's, it's Adam West. This is the Batmobile. Like, it's, and always will be. You yeah. know, and everything else is just a different version of this. You know, and part of that, I think, comes from 
the way it's treated in the show as well, I think more again, more than any other iteration, like they make a lot of the car in this because that's where the phone was, that's where the gadgets yeah. were. Yeah. And yeah, you get the repeated, you know, atomic batteries to power turbines to speed, and then yeah. they'd speed up the footage of the car actually driving. So it looks like it's going like Mark One or whatever. Yeah. Like so there was a lot of emphasis put on it. <coughs> but it looks fucking ridiculous. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely fucking stupid. Um, yeah. But then I think, you know, again, product of his time, it's got that kind of 60s retro future feel to it where everything yeah. was curved and bubbled. And that yeah. was just how architecture was looking then as well. You know, yeah. it's got a it's got a yesterday's future feel to it. And that, that's kind of funky now, I think. Yeah. You know, um, so, you know, normally we we kind of dive into the cultural impact of shows as well and talk about the writing. But I think actually this is almost so big and so relevant that it, it's, yeah. the discussion about the cultural impact of this show is just moot because yeah. it's like it it's just pervaded culture yeah. completely it, it's, it's not it's like, like the social say, impact oh, of water yeah like everything we know about superheroes and serials and action shows hmm. we know from batman 66 and yeah you know like it or loathe it like we wouldn't have half of the entertainment we have if this no, show hadn't no, right. happened. We we simply wouldn't have. Like you mentioned Power Rangers and stuff like that earlier on as well. Like, all right, so foreign import element to that. So mm-hmm. they might have still happened over there, but I certainly don't think you'd have got it on a network in the Western world. No. If you didn't prove that kids would watch action adventure serials. Yeah. And that comes from Batman. It, like, I joke about this all the time in my life, but like everything comes back to Batman sooner or later. Yeah. Like you talk to me for long enough and I'm going to be able to go, yeah, well, it's like with Batman, see? Yeah. And <laughs> well, yeah, I've been doing this for 18 years. So yeah, I, I kind of realize that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's normally this show that I'm talking about because it, yeah. it all comes back to this, you know? Yeah. Um, because quite frankly, without this, I wouldn't, be as obsessed with the character as I am. And yeah, it's not my favorite version. It's, you know, it's the version of the character I, I like the most, I think. But in terms of holistically, like, yeah, I'm going to take the animated series. Like, if you put both of them in front of me now and go, which one of these do you want to watch for four hours? I'm going to take the animated series. Hmm. But I think it's always the one that I just instantly tie back to straight away. Because this is another show that even watching now as an adult and enjoying it on a whole different level, as I say, I, I can appreciate the technical work that's gone into this show because it is a fucking technical masterpiece. It really yeah. is. Like I said, all of that choreography, the performances are amazing. Like we've talked about the colors as well. And, yeah. and we've said about how camp it is. But actually from a production design perspective as well, the work that's gone into that yeah. beautifully shot even though the cameras don't move that much like the colors and everything the lighting it all looks amazing right like everything yeah. is at the top of its game yeah and i think it just captivated my imagination so much that this is the first this is still the first place i always go when you say batman to yeah. me as a comic book fan as well i don't think about you know my favorite version of batman on the page and my favorite artists hmm. think about adam west like that's that's who Batman is to me because without him, I don't get any of that because all of that captivated me as a child and watching it as an adult now, sorry to come back around and, um, and appreciating all of that stuff is great. Mm. Yeah. But I still put it on and it's one of the few shows where I put it on and I'm fucking five years old again. Yeah. That on the floor in front of the TV. Well, this is it. And I mean, I think I, I, I mean, I, I said it on this is probably, this was definitely my first exposure to, not only this type of show, no, this type of show, but no, first exposure to superheroes and all that sort of stuff. And I, you can, as I said, you can, you'll always pick out who your James Bond is, who your, you know, who your Doctor Who is, just based on where you were. This is probably, this is probably the most, one of the most important shows to me in terms of my development, as I know, because this is the first fucking thing I can remember. And this is the earliest thing that I don't know. Beyond a Saturday afternoon, my dad used to work shifts, and he'd, he'd be working. For, he'd, he'd, you know, he'd, he'd he'd go in on a Monday morning and come back on a Thursday afternoon and shit like that. And we would we wouldn't see him. But on Saturday, the, my brother had football, so my and my mother didn't drive, so my dad had you know, my dad have to take my brother more often than not. So he'd come back and he'd be he'd be pissed off because it freezing, it was you know, it was wet, it was miserable, and he'd sit down and he'd have a cup of tea, 
and the TV beyond. We only had three channels. Oh, we had four channels, but no, none of us spoke Welsh, so we didn't have SOC. Um, so you know, we didn't have channel four. Didn't have any, didn't have uh, cable or anything like that. So we had three channels, and it would flick on, and this would be on like twelve o'clock, half eleven, twelve o'clock before the fucking chart show on ITV. And literally, we'd sit there for twenty minutes, half hour, and it'd be on. Like, I'm fucking what five, six years old at this point. And I'm sat on the floor. I'm going, hang on, what the fuck is this? Because yeah. oh no, 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 we no, we we only had, no, we don't only ever been exposed to kids shows, and all of a sudden it's like there's this stuff that I'm allowed to watch, and my dad watches it. It must be cool because my dad watches it, and then yeah. all of a sudden you know you you've got a character there who's in. You know, he he's fighting villains and he's in a mask and a cape and he's not so fucking hell. Yeah, and that's I think that's one of the I guess that's kind of what I was getting at and I think just in telling that story, you've actually communicated that a lot better than I just did because I fucking rambled. But, <laughs> but <laughs> makes a change to you, not me. There's there's something in here for everybody for every yeah. age group. That's the thing. Like. Now, as an adult, when I watch it, I do appreciate the humor. Like, it, it is yeah. very, very funny. And it's because and it's quite it's smarter than you give it credit for as well. It's, it's whip smart. And again, a lot of the credit for that actually goes to Adam West's comic timing and delivery. Like, yeah. you want to talk about a straight man. Like, he's fucking superb. He's so yeah. deadpan. Yeah. And he delivers these lines so earnestly. And when yeah. you counteract that, then with Burt Ward bouncing off the fucking walls as well. Yeah. And you've like, got well, your classic comedy double act. You know? Yeah, and then like you get that's that's complemented then by the Rogues Gallery as well. Um, one of the ones I watched, they they've got a projector and they're showing a picture of the Joker. And so just get close now, just have a look at the detail on that that fake flower. And as soon as they get close to it, the powder comes through it because he's behind yeah. the fucking photo. Yeah, and it's the stupidest thing in the world. But actually, but it's, it's funny. Like, I said, yeah, that's the, I'm nearly forty, and that made me laugh today. It is, it is funny it, and it knows it's funny and it leans into that and accepts this. Okay. That ridiculous humor is okay. In tone, yeah. the closest thing we've watched for this show to it in tone and in terms of the comedy, I think is probably rent a ghost yeah. because that had a similar thing of being like, it's kind of ageless humor. It's not dirty. It's not smutty. Yeah. There's but the it's not condescending either. No, there's the occasional nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah. But yeah, it's not condescending either. And it's not, it's ridiculous, but it's not childish. Yeah. So it, it kind of works for everybody. So there's, there's the humor for everybody. There's the action adventure element of it. Yeah. There's like, and again, you're talking about in the 60s here. So it's only so progressive it's going to be. But when you look at the representation of it all as well, you know, the inclusion yeah. of Batgirl later on and like, yeah. hey, maybe we could have had some more culturally diverse characters, but we did what we did some of them were flat out offensive but again the time again, and i'm not apologizing for that yeah and, 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 and you, it's very difficult and you know, we have this conversation quite a lot but you have to take things from the era they're made now you do. yes okay if you looked at it now you wouldn't know you wouldn't have it made anywhere near this way now but for you no know, for its time this is how it was put together you've got to take it on its own merits and no oh, this this is i mean i get wound up you see so many people oh well you know like Friends is a prime example. Now, the 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 the, the generation after us watching, ah, oh, well, no, there's no, there's the just a lack of diversity and lack of this. Yeah, okay, and you're absolutely right. But it's that's the show it is. We can't go back and change it. No. All we can do is we can comment on it on its merits and realize, yeah, okay, things may that no, may be problematic now weren't so problematic then, and we can learn from them or we cannot. But you're not you're never going to change it. No, no. So you just accept it as part of the show and, and you move forward and you acknowledge that it's wrong. You know, yeah. if you make this today, you certainly don't get characters like King Tut. You certainly, yeah. you certainly don't get Chief O'Hara and you haven't really yeah. ever since. Um, yeah. Nor should you. <laughs> so, you know, it, there's that. But, you know, putting that to one side again, like this wasn't, in air quotes, a boy's show. Then, no. you know, because you, you had Catwoman, you had Batgirl, you had Aunt Harriet, even you know, yeah. you had representation there. Um, yeah. So I think there was something for everyone. And that's yeah. probably why it's pervaded. And that's certainly why you loved it as a kid. I loved it as a kid. Your dad loved it. My granddad yeah. loved it. I remember watching it with him as well because it would be on at tea time. It is something for everybody. And yeah. there are not many shows 
especially kids shows like we mentioned it with spongebob last time as well but yeah. there's not many kids shows that you can sit generations down in front of yeah just let them go yeah have at this you know and and that's the thing i'm, I'm saying kids show there because that's more or less what we look at on on this show and i think this is treated as a kid show and yeah. i think that is unfair i think what it yeah. actually is is a family show yes. much in the same vein as the a team would have been in the 80s that's yeah. just 20 years on that was a yeah. family action adventure show. yes yeah you're right you know it, it's just it was made in a different time and it took itself marginally more seriously because mm-hmm. that's a lot more ridiculous than anybody remembers as well i assure yeah, you absolutely you know? yeah and then you go forward 10 years again and it becomes baywatch and yeah. that's a family adventure show just with loads of tits right but it's it's more in that vein than it is a children's show vein. yes i think this is family entertainment yeah um and, and i think it's the best of like, i can't think of another family entertainment show that comes even close to the quality of this i really can't no. No, and, and and what you said is actually actually right in terms of you know there's if you look at the sort of the cultural impact no the cultural impact of this and then you know you do move on to the you no know, you did have other you know, there were other shows of the same ilk over the next twenty years but then probably the one that still lands now would be the A Team and then you do move on to Baywatch and I don't really know what you get after that. Um, where did you go? I mean, you get Knight Rider as well, but that's the same time as the A Team. Yeah. Then in the mid nineties, you got a Baywatch. Um, I guess the. Yeah, the 2000s, I really don't know, because at that point, we're starting to move into YouTube, and unfortunately, TV starts to fall by the wayside. There must have been something. I guess maybe yeah. the Doctor Who revival is perhaps maybe. one of the closest things you get. Yeah, I mean, um, maybe. And I mean, all that kind of died off. I mean, when that came back, so probably from 2005, when it first came back, to about 2010, it was fucking everywhere. And oh, then yeah, absolutely. Once probably once Tennant's Doctor went, then they changed showrunners and it took a diff- it took a turn. It started being more about nostalgia than it did about family entertainment. So all of a sudden it started being more, you know, you got more callbacks to the older series. And then as they've gone through, they've become a bit more serious and a bit darker and a bit more annoying. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't really, that's, you're probably right. That's probably the one that came next. And after that, I have no idea. Like, I don't know what you would sit down as a family and watch now. No, I mean, I, I don't know because I don't, have a family to sit down and watch things with so i wouldn't I really mind know sit down and watch tv with me anyway so, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's exactly the thing isn't it even if i did have one yeah from what they, I they see, all want to be they all want to be on fucking you know, watching stuff on youtube or you no know. exactly that everybody i know with kids has just gotten one of those fucking chunky amazon kid tablets and they just go like they yeah, watch whatever yeah. the fuck you want which is which is amazing YouTube. because it's it's just a normal kindle with a big fucking rubber with, pad on it yeah and but parental they, 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 locks yeah. well you can do that on a kindle anyway but you know, it's 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 just literally they charge you an extra thirty quid for a bit of rubber. But but do you know what I mean? Like you, that's what you do now. You don't sit down as a family and watch one show. Maybe you didn't in the sixties, hmm. right? And maybe you didn't in in the eighties either. But it's just the strength of these shows was so good that it brought people together. But I think hmm. that's more about society and, yeah. and where we are today. Like then, you know, we didn't have a million and one distractions like we do now, and we didn't have instantly accessible entertainment. Yeah. Like, and like, even so, like going back to like the eighties, like, there wasn't a TV in every room. No, so it was, you know, there was a family TV in the living room, so that's where you sat and watched TV. And if you wanted to watch TV, you, to watch, you watch what was on. Exactly, and and that's that's the key difference, isn't it? Now we've got tablets, we've got smartphones, we've got probably at least two TVs in any given house. Yeah, and so yeah, the kids can go and watch whatever they want on their tablet, yeah. whilst mum's watching Strictly and dad's watching whatever he wants to watch. Baywatch, probably. Probably. Um, I, was, I was going to say porn, but yeah, we'll go with yours. It's more, more wholesome. Mine's more family friendly. Just. <laughs> um, so, so everybody's watching different things. But yeah, for us, like at lunchtime on Saturday, if you were watching Batman, then your dad had to watch Batman. And the difference is that he wouldn't fucking grumble about it in the same way that he would something. I mentioned when we did Defenders of the Earth, that used to happen with my dad. It was one of the few shows that I could be watching. And he'd be like, yeah, all right. Yeah, Ever. I'll sit down and watch this for half hour. This is fine. Yeah. I'll I'll, you know? I'll do it under protest, but actually I'll no, but when it starts, I'll I'll just shut up and watch it. He flat out didn't protest about defenders, he just sit down and watch it with me. Whereas everything else I think like he secretly liked, but would just pretend he didn't. And yeah, that's what we do a lot of. Pretend he was doing some work, get his timesheets yeah. out and look like he was busy, yeah. but really I know he's watching Brave Star. You know, <laughs> like like that kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas yeah, defenders he'd sit down and watch. And 
and this was the same. This would be a case of it, it's not like, oh, I'm going to have to watch it because it's on and the fucking kids want to watch it. Yeah. But no, this is all right. It's Batman. I'll sit down yeah. and watch it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I don't think for all people dump on it now, I think there is a great le- level of love for this show. Like people yeah. dump on it, but it's always kind of friendly ribbon. I don't think anybody yeah. would flat out say they hate this show. And I think so much of that comes back to actually, this is probably as soppy as we're ever going to get on this show, I think, because we tend to be fairly cynical. But that <laughs> probably comes comes back to that memory of just uh, literally everybody just gathering around and watching this. And I think it was probably yeah. the same for every household. If this was on, that you can't not look at this because yeah. it's so fucking noisy and so loud and so vibrant. Yeah. And once you start looking at it, you realize how fucking good it is and how funny it is and how yeah. charismatic and magnetic the lead is. Yeah. So you just watch it. No, and yeah, we haven't touched on merchandise. I don't think we need to. I don't think we even need to mention how much merchandise there is. Oh, like, fuck obviously, no. Batman is a merchandise machine anyway. But this specific iteration, like, yeah, like, I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I know on the shelf behind you, you can't, we can't quite see it on the screen, but on the shelf behind you, there's fucking loads of books. There's at least two on my shelf. I'm looking to see if there's any more behind me now. Yeah. You know, and no, and that, that, that's just books. That's before you go into fucking bobbleheads and belt buckles and fucking everything. But I mean, specifically, you know, this show, this iteration of Batman had its own specific, which like, yeah. yes, um, books. I haven't got any hard copies behind me, but I have entire digital libraries of comics that are written in the vein of Batman 66. That is a whole run that the, that's yeah. been continued in comics. I've got the box set there. I've had, I don't know how many die cast Batmobiles over the years. Yeah. Um, I just always seem to lose them. I mean, not as an adult. I mean, as a kid now. <laughs> um, yeah, we had one. I finally tried a lunchbox at some point. Yeah, there'll be lunchboxes. There was coloring books. Every Batman fancy dress costume you saw before the Nolan verse happened was basically the Adam West costume. Now yeah. people tend to get the Christian Bale one, which is just categorically not as good. Um, but, you know, every mask you saw yeah. was Adam West's Batman on a mask. You know, whatever you saw, I, I don't like to use the term, but whatever you saw cheap crap for kids. <laughs> It was this version of Batman you had on it. Simple yeah. as that, you know. Yeah. And and I think that market is still out there. I'm sure that stuff is still there if you want to look for it. Oh, and I'm probably, sure yeah. some of the original stuff is probably very valuable now as well. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Um, yeah, so so I mean, all in all, like we I, we haven't really talked about a lot of specifics with this show. Like I don't feel like we've got under the hood as much mm. as we do. We fucked here all night. Yeah, but I think that's just genuinely because this is one of the, the rare ones yeah where we just have nothing but pure love for well it. well this this is the thing and we do get these just very occasionally whereby no we've either gone back and rewatched it and been surprised or we haven't needed to go back and rewatch it because we know anyway and i think it's one of those that just knowing where it comes from and where it sits on a personal level that yeah. that no there's there's so much to that we don't need to be unpacking and no each of the 120 episodes i mean as I've, I've not watched anywhere near as much as i would like to because i just haven't had time um mm. you know, with everything else i'm doing at the moment i haven't had time to sit down so i've probably watched half a dozen episodes over the last three days and i would love to say i'm going to watch the other 114 over the next couple of weeks i'm not going to have time i've got no shit to do but at some point i will say right okay if i've got a spare hour i might chuck a couple on i do that regularly um, I don't watch them in order. This isn't something that I Yeah, you binge. don't need to, I don't I don't think. No, you don't need to. But now and again, particularly if I'm having a, a really rough day, to be honest, and I've got twenty, thirty minutes to spare, I will reach for these DVDs. Like because they're just joy. They yeah. they it's absolute joy. And you can properly just get lost in it and it makes you feel like a kid again. It, it's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful show. So yeah, we, we maybe haven't got under the hood and we, we, we haven't criticized it perhaps as much as we can with the other shows. But I I think maybe there's an element of bias with us in that as well. But probably I don't think I could possibly find anything wrong with this show if I tried. I mean, I think if we, if we were to look at it and go through, you know, go through episode by episode and look at them, look at the writing, look at some of oh, the... Oh, God, you know, we could pull some of the narrative shit. You, you, yeah. could, you could pull shit apart, but... I, I, for the show as, as a whole, I don't think I don't think I, I could. I don't think there's anything there where I could categorize it. Actually, well, they consistently do this wrong. This consistently doesn't work. This consi- no, this contradicts that. I don't think that's there. No, it's not. And even if you were to look at the writing and try and pull it apart, 
some episodes are stronger than others. That's the same with any TV show. Yeah. Um, you know, even if you've only got one season, let alone two, some episodes are always better than others. But yeah. the simple fact is that the writing is always functional. Like yeah. it's never, it's never not good. Then do you know what I mean? Yeah. There, there are occasions where something might be a bit stupid or it might not quite make sense. But the through lines are always the same and they always yeah. work and they always tell that story within 30 minutes. It's always one of the rogues gallery has decided to go on some madcap fucking caper to steal something. Yeah. Batman's going to have to do a bit of sleuthing to stop it. Then they're going to have to like answer the phone, slide down the pole, shoot yeah. off in the Batmobile, have a fight, capture the villain. Yeah. Store use, the use whatever gadget they happen yeah. to need that week. Yeah. That's, those are your story beats. Yeah. They hit them every time. They work every time because it's classic storytelling. Yeah. And it's just, you know, lather, rinse, repeat. And look, occasionally, that's all I want. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that as long as it's executed well. And this does execute it well. Yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's, there's, I mean, before we wrap up, I think we can get into that point. I've got one very important question that we haven't come to yet. Who's your favorite cat woman? And that's hard. That's like asking me to pick a favorite child, and I haven't even got any. Um, <laughs> I think. Are we talking specifically now? Just yeah, from from the, the show. From the from the show and the movie that came with it. So Julie Newmar, uh, Lee Bennett, yeah, yeah, yeah. or Eartha Kitt. I think I've got to go with the Kitt. I think my head tells me it is Julie Newmar. Oh, okay. Eartha Kitt was the first one. She was yeah. the first, and, and I think her performance is just so out there and so iconic. Yeah, and, and she does stuff with that role that nobody else has before, or or you know before. Well, yeah, nobody did before, and nobody has yeah. since. Basically, yeah. Um, it, it's got to be Eartha Kitt. Yeah, no, that was mine as well. I I, 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 want, I want to see because my 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 go to is always is Eartha Kitt. Any anytime anybody sort of mentions this show. That's where my brain goes straight away is Eartha Kitt. But I, I did quite like Julie Newmar as well. I've got, I, I like the three of them. I like Lee, uh, Lee Mario as well. The best, right? I, I That's why I was thinking about it, because I... This is head and heart. You mm. know? That, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I think she's the best, but I think Eartha Kitt is the one that just lives in there. Yeah, you know? that, that's she, the same for me. Eartha Kitt is the one that, if anybody asks me about Catwoman, it's Eartha Kitt. Yeah. And, and again, this is a this is a Caesar Romero Joker thing, right? Where her portrayal of Catwoman is nothing like what I would consider Catwoman to be, right? Mm. And yeah. were had we not had her performance, and were they to be making a version of Batman today, and it had that in it as Catwoman, I'd be fucking furious. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be absolutely fucking livid, right? <laughs> but I was a kid. And I didn't know any better. And mm. so, again, that version of that character is its own thing. And it just yeah. lives in my heart. But, but I think what you, I think you made a valid point as well is that, for me, she was the first one I remember. Yes. And that always, no, that always has a big role to play. Yeah. Because it's the Alfred was, thing all over again, isn't it? Yeah, yes. exactly. I know, and it's, you know, whenever you see that, yes, okay, Julia Nemo was first. And um, I th- whether or not she was better, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's again, it's that head and heart thing. But I think no, I can't, I can't place Julie Newmar first because I didn't see her there first, and because they were on all the fucking time, they weren't shown in order. They were just whichever ones they had in the archive that week they pulled out. So it, I, I you know, think you'd have yeah. different ones every, every every couple of weeks anyway. And yeah, it's just, for me, it's, it always comes back to being being with a kid. Yeah, I, and it's it's not only that she was the first; it's because because you saw her first. And that performance is just so like she, she does that kind of feline performance so well. Yes. You know, the purring and the rolling of the eyes and she's slinking around everywhere. Like she, yeah. she literally takes Catwoman to the nth degree. Yeah. Again, just chewing fucking scenery in the same way that Romero does with the Joker, where he like yeah. really pushes for the madcap clown antics. Nothing else can compare. No, that's Nothing. right. And, 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 you know, going right back to when we opened and I said, like, even though I know Mark Hamill will always be my favorite Joker, like, Cesar Romero's in there. That's, yeah. 
that's the character. Everything about that look, everything, even the dodgy tash. Yeah. Like, it's all, it was the first, and it was so massive. They're such big performances. Yeah. That you just can't help but love them. Yeah. No, so, that's, yeah, that's fair. I, I think, I think it's it. Yeah. I think it's fun. I, I even though I know better. Yeah, I, I just want because I, I have I've, I have the same response. I just wanted to see if it was just me, but uh, apparently not, which is good. I, I, yeah, I think it is probably a generational thing as well because I've had this discussion with people um, again quite a lot, um, and when you discuss it with people round about ten years ish older than us, they will all to a man say Julie Newman, every yeah. single one. Yeah, because again, it's about who was first for you. Yeah, although I, I mean, I I have had different arguments whereby people will swear blind is michelle pfeiffer i mean she's good she's Again, good though but she's not she's not and she's, she's not, not Catwoman. yeah <laughs> that's the thing that's this the is thing. this is the thing and i mean there have been so many iterations now i mean you had um dan hathaway's version you've got the version in gotham where the um where bruce and selena are a lot younger um and then you didn't got, watch much gotham but what i did see was about half of the first season. I thought she was fucking excellent. She w- uh, she was, but again, the cat no, because it was no, it was young Catwoman, mm. so it's it just wasn't the same. Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, didn't I, care I, for Gotham for that reason. This whole yeah, young I mean, version I, thing didn't. Yeah, I, I think I got probably about halfway through the second season and then dropped it. And then by the time I I inadvertently saw like a late final season episode, one of the key characters from the first two seasons had now become a villain in their own right. I was like, oh, hang on, where did they fucking come from? Yeah. Um, so that was a bit weird. Um, and yeah, it was just a bit strange, really. I'm, I may go back and give it another go, but probably not, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think Catwoman is still a character that's never been truly nailed. No, um, I, I, I don't think it's... I mean, I, I've not read that many of, of the Catwoman um, books, but I don't think anybody's got it particularly um, uh, particularly nailed on from what I have read. Zoe Kravitz has probably come the closest so far. There's still... Okay. There's elements that aren't quite right i think but she's come close i like dan hathaway she's one of the few things i like about that trilogy but again not really there um yeah i mean i quite like the the version they had in the arkham games i thought that was okay that version was okay um that's the the closest but yeah if we're talking games yeah that's absolutely all right i'm wrong actually she has been done properly and it's in the arkham games i think that's Um, that's probably the closest i've got i I did i like those performances but again the problem comes when because I'm not that familiar with the character from from the books, always comes back to Eartha Kit. I'm thinking you're not doing it right, because that's not the way Eartha Kit did it. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, yeah. She's just as you say, it, it, that is another iconic performance. I can't believe we waited till the end to bring that up. Actually, that's the thing with this show. There is so, so much, much in it. Yeah, that has informed just everything we know about entertainment. That you can talk about. We could literally be running. This podcast could go four hours, right? And we get to the yeah. end. Go, ah, it won't. Listen, I promise. It won't. But what about this? You know, <laughs> because yeah, it's just it is in every true sense of the word. This is iconic. Everything about it is iconic. All yeah. of the performances, all of the music score, the way it looks, the, everything. It's just yeah. one of the best fucking TV shows of all time. I'm sorry, but it is like whether you agree with me or not, like, <laughs> write in and let us know. Because I like yeah. if you're one of those people that dump on this, give That's me funny. a valid reason why, and don't just say because it's campy and stupid. Because I yeah. will not accept that. That's just a stylistic no, the, choice. And, and this is the thing, and this is what no, I mean, we we'll always we'll always say here that we're, we're always up for no, we're always up for discussion, we're always up for debate. But if you want to do that, give us no, give us a reason, give us a debate, give us an argument. Don't just say oh because it's shit because yeah. that doesn't help anybody. I, I can say that about we, Nolan we, we win that argument. We win that argument yeah. every time. It's our show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the three people who ever feed back to us, if they, when they just say, oh, well, we don't like it, was shit. We just don't read you out. Yeah, exactly. Um, Maybe so, we should. So, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's just, we, we could literally talk all night, but I think, you know, you get the picture. This yes. Is. We like this show. Love it. it it's it's part of me. It's part yeah. of me in a way that only a handful of shows are, you know, yeah. and and this is one of those shows. So yeah, I I'll continue to watch it till my fucking dying day. I really yeah. will. Like yeah, that's I'll, that's the same. Here. I mean, I um, there are 
like most people do it with films rather than TV or with books rather than TV. There, there are certain ones they they hold so dear and they will always return to. They always go back to because they hold such. Even if they are, even if they do think that you no, know, as they grow up, they do think that actually they're a bit shit. They hold such a place. It's like so there's yeah. so much sentiment attached to them that mm-hmm. they can't not go back. And like from I don't have many shows that do that. I mean, there are the shows that I liked as a kid. There are shows that I loved as a kid, and there are shows that I've liked as a kid and now I've revisited as an adult and I still appreciate them. But there are very few where I go right. Okay, that's no. I can see where that informs fucking thinking, and that informs how I deal, no, how I, I view certain situations. There are certain films that do that. There are certain books that do that. Uh, but yeah. no, across the, across the board, there are very few. But this is one for me that actually, you know, I equate that to such a time where I was learning. I was still learning things. I was still learning how things worked. So all of a sudden, to see this, you no, know, to see this larger than life character on screen, on screen battling these other larger than life characters, which have so many applications, and you know, because you know, themes aren't just very great book reports, they actually matter. Being able to look at these things, oh, fuck, yeah. okay. <laughs> eh, it's, it's fine, it's done now. Um, but, you know, so having ha- being able to look back at that and with the fondness, well, actually, yeah, that that is still important. That There's a reason why I, that was important to me at the time, mm-hmm. being you know, fucking nearly 40 years later. I can't. No, I can't put. I can't put the show away. No, there's some way you go right. I've I've watched it. Got the DVDs. I'll stick them on occasionally. This one, if it's there, I will watch it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and you're right. It's, you know, you mentioned you're kind of still learning things as you watch this, and I think that that's probably part of like early memory formation as well. Because yeah. you remember the show and like, I don't know if you do this as well, right? But when you think of like clowns, and again, this is coming back to Joker, right? Clown gets out a custard pie, yeah. Fozzie Bear, right? Clown gets out a squirty flower, and straight Joker. to Caesar Ramirez. Yeah. Straight to Caesar Ramirez Joker as well. No one else is. Yeah. Straight to his Joker. Absolutely. As soon as I see yeah. a squirty flower, that's the first place I go immediately. Yeah. And it's because I learned that as a five-year-old. So yeah. Squirty flower belongs to the Joker. And similarly, actually, which is really fucking perverse and really difficult to reconcile with that life. Anytime I see a bust of an old old bald dude, there's a switch in there that opens the fucking door. That's absolutely true. That is absolutely true. I cannot see a bust without thinking, who's back here? Yeah. And and for some people as well, they see a fireman's pole as well, and they're like, yeah. Ghostbusters. Me, Batman. As soon as I see a fireman's pole, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn on that one because I, 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 I can go, uh, can go Batman or Ghostbusters on that one. But yeah, anytime I see a bust, that's that's opening a secret, a secret door every yeah. time. Yeah, you can't take it to a museum. I get chucked out all the fucking time. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean it's it's things as I say it's just that's a memory formation where you, know, you 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 make these associations and now you know, say almost forty years later they're still in there. Yeah, yeah, and always will be. Yeah. So yeah, I mean I don't think there's really much. Well, there's a lot more we could say. It's, about Yeah, like I said, we could literally go for four hours. I, I think I think we draw a line under there and just like yeah. you get the picture, listeners. If there's something we haven't covered, yeah. write in. We'll have discourse with you. I could literally talk Batman yeah. all fucking night. How we yeah. don't have our own just show that's just me talking Batman I don't know but probably because I would never do anything else and it would go on for like quite possibly I mean other people are doing it as well so you know yeah um, maybe, maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll let uh, let somebody else do it yeah um, I'd probably bore everyone to tears to be honest so so yeah we, we fucking love it you get the picture yeah um yeah and as uh, as as Chris said you know, if, if if people have particular memories particular thoughts please write in and let us know um we'll we'll have that conversation with you um and i've forgotten the fucking out again because you know, it's been it's been about a fortnight since i've forgotten the out for the show anyway well before we hit the out um i'm just going to take the opportunity to to point out that we did say earlier that this was episode 99 so for those of you that are any good at you know counting Math. um <laughs> which isn't maths, us is it it's, it's literally us. counting. It's still um, isn't us. Let's fair. We're not good at that either. We're about to hit 100 episodes, which we haven't done on any of our other shows yet. So nope. that's pretty fucking monumental for us. Across the network, we're way over 100 shows. But in terms of an individual show, they've either died out or haven't quite reached I'm, I'm got there yet. that milestone yet. So we wanted to celebrate that. We wanted to do something special. Um, and you'll notice, you know, I have been saying for the last few episodes that these last sort of four or five that we've done have all followed a theme. So for those world's greatest detectives out there, <laughs> hopefully you've caught up with us. You know, yeah. if, if, if you've got an element of the Batman about you, you've probably realized that. And, and let's be fair. We've been teasing this for about three years as well. Yeah. We've rushed these through because we wanted to talk about shows 
that have incredible theme tunes, basically. So moving forward for episode 100, we are going to cross over with Who Wins, and we are finally going to do that theme tunes episode that we've threatened to do for the last three years or so. You asked for it three years ago, yeah. and we didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. We get there in the end, yeah. all right? Um, so we've chosen a list ourselves. Ironically, very few of these shows that we've rushed through <laughs> have ended up on They didn't that make list. it. Um, I, think it was... I think a few of them made the reserve list, didn't they? Yeah, there is a reserve list. There'll be some honourable mentions as well, but yeah. some of them made it on. Um, and then we've decided to throw the last couple of slots over to you. So we want to know what is your favourite theme tune and why? Why is it important to you? So write in through the usual channels, which Mark will remember shortly and let you know. Probably. Um, get in touch with us however you want. Just let us know what your favourite theme tune is. We'll be throwing a poll up on our Facebook page as well, so you can vote in that if you want. But just hit us up. Let us know. We've still got everybody's suggestions from last time, I think. So yeah, they're all on We'll yeah, bring those into the mix as well. But yeah, those last couple of slots, they're going to be going over to you. Uh, because otherwise, it's just going to be everything that me and Mark think is the best. And our lists, when we put them together, were pretty similar. Which yeah. is why, why some <laughs> of these ones we've rushed through haven't actually ended up on there. Because yeah, we pretty much have thought exactly the same thing with these um yeah. so we're then going to split it across the two shows we'll do a knockout tournament as we have done on who wins before so we'll draw them at random pit them against each other talk about their various pros and cons then decide which is best move it through the tournament and ultimately end up with a winner so yeah. you know it's pretty scientific as well this isn't just going to be <laughs> us going well this one's the best because it's fucking batman um that's not there may happen. be an element of that <laughs> I mean, I already know what's going to win in my head. Whether it does or not is another thing. Yeah, and whether, I, I'm, I'm slightly torn. Whether, and it's not Batman, by the way. Um, whether you guys blindside me with something I haven't even thought about yet. I'm saying I know what's going to win. You could throw Yeah, we don't even know what's in the fucking pot yet. So, yeah. No, so, so who knows? So, yeah, get in touch with us uh, via the usual channels, which are, drum roll, <laughs> let's see if he can do it. <laughs> No, you can't. Um, yeah, so you can get us on SMP, uh, on Twitter at SMPDPod. You can go to our website, ddpodcast.net. We can also get our previous episodes and our other shows. Wherever you get your podcasts from, uh, subscribe, leave some message, and we get back to you as best we can. But until next time. We will see you for episode 100. Same bat time, same bat channel.